Hey everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we're back with our second part of our topic, 6.5, regulation of gene expression. In the first part of our discussion on 6.5, we talked about operons, which are the primary ways that prokaryotes regulate their genes. And in particular, we talked a lot about the LAC operon and a little about the TRIP operon and uh, how those regulate those enzyme pathways. Um, so if it wants to digest lactose or I believe tryptophan, um, that's how it does it, or if it doesn't want to express those genes. So uh, eukaryotes in almost every single way are um, you know, more complicated, so the regulation of gene expression for eukaryotes is a lot more complicated too. And uh, here's the thing about regulation of gene expression in eukaryotes. Um, your cells within you right now, they're very, very specialized. Cells in a complex eukaryote like ourselves, we, they only have one job. They have one job. They're highly differentiated and highly specialized. All right, a, a liberal, liver cell is going to produce alcohol dehydrogenase. Um, a neuron is going to fire action potentials using voltage-gated ion channels. Um, what? A, a red blood cell is going to carry oxygen via hemoglobin. They have one job. Okay, you're not going to see a uh, you're not going to see a red blood cell sending action potentials. Um, and the res and the reason for that is is because of differential gene expression. All of your cells have the same DNA. Um, they all have the same DNA. They are all part of you. You are one organism, but they're very, very different cells depending on gene expression and the signals that they get um, in order to express various genes. So differential gene expression is the expression of different genes with the same genome. So like an embryonic stem cell, an unspecialized cell can become many different types of cells depending on which genes it's told to express. Okay, so it's not, so like I said, a neuron is not going to uh, express a gene to produce alcohol dehydrogenase and start, you know, working as a liver cell. Okay, and that's because of regulation of gene expression. So the phenotype of a cell is determined by the combination of genes that are expressed and the levels at which they are expressed. What genes are they expressing and how much are they expressing those genes? Okay, that's what gives cells their jobs and that's what makes them specialized. And there are lots of different ways for eukaryotes to regulate their genes and this is what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Um, so here's a overall look at um, eukaryotic gene expression, chromatin remodeling, transcription, RNA processing, leaving the nucleus, mRNA stability, translation, and post-translation. So we've talked about translation, we've talked about RNA processing, transcription, um, some of these other ones we're going to discuss today. And uh, at each of these seven steps here, there's some kind of regulation that the eukaryote can do in order to, I don't know, prevent one of these from happening or adjust it slightly um, so that certain genes are expressed over other ones. All right, and the first uh, manner of discussion, or the first manner of regulation here that we'll discuss is uh, histone acetylation, um, and that is modifying histone proteins in chromosomes to promote transcription. Okay, so uh, chromosomes are highly condensed packaged DNA, um, and histones, I don't know if we talked about this when we discussed chromosome structure, but histones are proteins that uh, the DNA kind of wraps around a little bit, um, and it really holds the chromosome, well, together. So histones can be acetylated or modified in order to open up certain genes within that chromosome in order to, for it to, uh, to promote transcription, okay? So certain parts of that chromosome can be literally opened up thanks to a slight modification of these histone proteins in order for, uh, to increase transcription of, of various genes, okay? So that's one way. Um, here's, uh, here's an overlook of what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, histone modification. Here's the chromatin. Um, so histones can be methylated. Uh, methyl group is like a CH, CH3. Yeah, CH3. Um, that can be added to these histone proteins and then take a look. It kind of unravels and there's that DNA. It's more accessible and a gene is active. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to histone modification. Um, a certain group or acetylation or methylation um, can open up these these packaged this package DNA and open up so that gene can be expressed because it's inaccessible now it's accessible thanks to that slight modification. Um, but the main way uh, that eukaryotes are going to be regulating their genes is similar to the way that prokaryotes regulate their genes and that's at the the transcription level. All right, so you can stop this process 
at lots of different steps, but the main one that's going to be uh, done by eukaryotes is that the transcription level, right? So if you recall from a few videos ago, transcription factors, those are proteins that regulate, uh, th they allow for transcription, all right? Uh, and they regulate expression by binding to certain DNA sequences depending on the signal cells received. So these proteins that had set up the transcription initiation complex, um, like we're seeing over here, they can either promote or repress transcription based on uh, what regions, what regions of the DNA they bind to, okay, or what their job is. Right. So we have sections of DNA called enhancers. We have well, there's our promoter. Uh, there's a, there's sections of DNA called silencers. Here's a section called an insulator. Um, and depending on what kind of what kind of proteins these transcription factors where they bind to on the DNA or ex yeah on the DNA excuse me um, that really determines when and where and how uh, various genes are going to be expressed okay because these transcription factors RNA polymerase can't do its job without these transcription factors initiating that transcription right so uh, the regulation of those proteins can really play a huge role in the regulation of expression of genes, whether or not genes are expressed. Um, so these, uh, these segments of DNA that transcription factors bind to, they're called control elements, and I listed some of them off before. A silencer, an enhancer, an activator, or I think that's protein actually, an enhancer, um, an insulator, all that. Um, those are what we call control elements, okay? And those are the regions that transcription factors bind to. So the induction of transcription during development re results in sequential gene expression. Now, what does that mean? Um, that means that during different stages of development of any organism, of any eukaryotic organism, uh, gene expression is going to be different. Okay? So uh, regulation of gene expression, you know, genes, as you're growing up, uh, genes for, say, growth factor are going to be not as expressed when you, you know, when you reach adulthood, when you stop growing. Um, and different genes are expressed at different points in development, which, which results in, you know, sequential. Uh, these genes are expressed, then these genes are expressed, then these genes are expressed during various uh, stages of development and of uh, life cycle. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to say with that. Um, another form of regulation that we've actually discussed before, and so I didn't put a little highlight and underline there, it's alternative splicing. And if you remember what that is, um, so, that, so splicing is a way of um, RNA processing, getting rid of what we call the introns, they're interfering um, part of the DNA and tying together the exons, like it's editing film, right? Um, so depending on which genes are expressed and which ones are treated as introns, which ones are exons and which ones are introns, you take one segment of RNA, right, you take, a, take little bits and pieces out of it, um, that's going to produce, well, that's going to produce different genes, right? Uh, that's going to produce different proteins depending on which regions are expressed and which ones are spliced out. So which, depending on which ones are introns and exons, actually is another form of regulation, gene regulation. Um, so spliceosomes are going to be, you know, taking out the introns, and depending on what it takes out, that can produce different proteins, and thus, you know, g different genes can be expressed. Okay, another one, um, something new, it's called a microRNA. So I know you're getting tired of hearing about all these RNAs, mRNA, tRNA, uh, oh my gosh, miRNA. There's lots of different RNAs. Um, but microRNAs, what they are, they're actually kind of recently discovered within the last, like, I want to say like 20 years. Um, but they're small RNA molecules that bind to complementary sequences and mRNA molecules. And they can do one or two things. They can block the translation or they, they can degrade mRNA. So think about this. mRNA transcript, it's, RNA pro it's, it's processed, it's taken out of the nucleus, it's on its way to the ribosome to start getting translated, but then you have, you know, the cell decides, whoa, I don't want to express that gene. It can send over a little tiny piece of microRNA, bind to the complementary RNA and make it double-stranded for a little bit, and then it's going to block transcription from ever happening or excuse me, translation from ever happening. It can't go through the ribosome with this extra piece of RNA attached. Um, and other types of mRNAs um, can degrade the mRNA and, and just uh, take it apart completely. Um, so those, that's another, yet another way that eukaryotes can regulate gene expression. They can, they can block the mRNA from being translated or they can just degrade it itself. 
Um, so here's a summary of what we talked about today. I'm going to talk about these last two very briefly. Um, but ways eukaryotes can regulate gene expression. And I'm bringing this picture back because, again, this is, this is the overall process of eukaryotic gene expression. And it can be... Um, it can be interfered with or regulated at the first level when it comes to chromatin remodeling, depending on which, uh, on which you know, histone proteins are methylated or um, acetylated um, can determine which genes are actually going to be expressed in that chromosome. Varying transcription factors, here's step number two, right? Um, depending on which transcription factors are present, which ones are absent, where they're binding, that can affect how... Um, and why, where, which genes are expressed. Alternative mRNA splicing, when we're, that's talking about the RNA processing part here. miRNAs, um, when, you know, it, it blocks to blocks various parts of the mRNA transcript or it degrades the mRNA, so we're talking about these two steps over here. Inhibition of translation, so various um, proteins can be used to block translation um, or to degrade the ribosome. Through which, uh, through which an mRNA is being sent. Um, and finally, degradation of proteins. Um, so genes can also be expressed after, you know, the protein has already been made, too. The cell can send, uh, send a protein on over to the lysosome, and it'll be digested and um, taken apart so that it doesn't do its job anymore. And that is, by definition, another form of uh, regulation of gene expression. Okay, that's it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time. Bye.